Hello, it's Digital DJ Tips and a strange time for us, but a very uh, apt time because we're looking at this brand new device from Pioneer DJ, the DDJ Flex 4 that's just been launched as we go live here on our channels. In today's show, I'm gonna be talking through seven things that you need to know about this unit compared to the one that it replaces because this is Pioneer DJ's brand new entry level two channel controller, replacing the Pioneer DJ DDJ 400. And honestly, it looks pretty similar. It's had a bit of a refresh, but on the face of it, <clears throat> what we're looking at here is something that doesn't look too different from the controller that it replaces. But there is actually quite a lot of difference here. And they future-proofed this thing, as we're about to find out. So if you are a controller geek, if you love to know about all the new stuff first, if you're looking to buy a two-channel controller, if you've been thinking of buying the Pioneer DJ DDJ400, but thought, you know what, I think that might be getting a little bit old now. Uh, maybe it's time, uh, maybe I should hang on a bit and see if something new comes along. Well, you were wise, because something new has come along. It's the DDJ Flex 4, and it's the new entry-level controller from Pioneer DJ. So we're gonna look at seven things that you need to know before buying this unit today. And at the end of today's video, we're gonna throw it open and talk live to you, our community. We're on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch at the moment. So, two-channel controller, exactly the same, Equipment, feel, layout as the DDJ400. Same pads, same size pitch controls, same type of jog wheels, same size, same feel. They've got a matte finish now. The whole thing's dark gray now. Exactly the same mixer here, two channels, the club style effects down here. Exactly the same looping areas at the top. Exactly, I mean, literally the plastic, the buttons, the feel, the knobs, everything is the same. There's very, very little quality difference, if any. They've rounded the corners a bit. It does look a bit more modern. It does look nice. It's had a bit of a refresh, but there's no change as far as the quality, the feel of the unit goes, the size or anything. So you have to bear that in mind right from the beginning. We're not looking at a, a new controller insofar as they've kind of changed a lot. There's the old one and there's the new one. It's very similar, and actually we're pretty pleased about that because we are not the biggest fans of the one that's higher up, the Flex 6, which just looks to me like Homer Simpson's car. It just looks like they've thrown everything together and it never quite fits and just doesn't work for, for me. And I was a bit worried that this one was gonna be like that. Well, it's not. They've done a good job of keeping what everyone loved about the DDJ400 in the DDJ Flex 4. So that's the kind of overview of the unit, but now I wanna talk you through those seven things, and afterwards you can ask questions over on our channels and we will answer them. We are live today, so I can talk to you live on YouTube, Facebook, and on Twitch. Right, shall we get started? So the first thing to know about this, really big news, it works with Serato. No more do you have to make your choice when you're buying a beginner controller from Pioneer DJ as to whether you get, get one that works with Serato or Rekordbox. If you want one that works with both, you've got one. This is the old one, only work with Rekordbox. This is the new one, also works with Serato. It unlocks Serato DJ Lite out of the box. Also, it unlocks the performance version of Rekordbox out of the box. Really good news because you don't have to decide for certain what software you're gonna use or maybe you already have a Serato license. So there's some clear water between this and the original one there because you get both pieces of software in the box. So, second thing is that this also works with the iPad, the iPhone, and the Android uh, app. What iPhone, iPad, and Android app, you might ask? Well, we spotted, because we are journalists and that, that's our job, we spotted on Pioneer DJs, like tucked away in their press releases, uh, some news about a forthcoming app. And this forthcoming app is a mobile app for Rekordbox. And the Rekordbox mobile app, which I'm just trying to find our news story so I can show you, but of course, when you look for these things, they never pop up. Uh, the Rekordbox app is coming at the beginning of 2023. And that works on all mobile devices, apparently. There's even, around the back of this, a little switch which says Android, mono or stereo. So this unit is designed for mobile as well, in a way which this one is not. So what that means is that you can plug the, the new Pioneer DDJ Flex 4 into your phone, your Android device, or your iPad, or your Android tablet, whatever, and work with the new 
forthcoming early 2023 Pioneer DJ record box app, which presumably is going to replace their Wii DJ app. So this means that you're getting some of the functionality of this little thing, which is the DDJ200, which also works with mobile devices out of the box, uh, but is not a recommended controller for most people from Digital DJ Tips because of some other things it hasn't got. So this one here kind of brings that functionality across and gives it to you as well. So I can see that you're gonna get Algorithms DJ Pro AI working with this and other mobile apps as well. So this is really a universal DJ controller. Recordbox, Serato, Virtual DJ will without doubt work with this very, very soon. And you're also getting the ability to use whatever computing device you have, phone, iPad, tablet, or Mac or Windows, to use it with. So Wise from Pioneer DJ, I think. And also the final bit in the puzzle there is that this can work on Bluetooth. Now that doesn't mean you get Bluetooth music input or anything like that. It's MIDI over Bluetooth. And that means that you can communicate with your mobile device without a wire between the two and control the DJ software on your mobile device with Bluetooth. And there won't be any latency because MIDI doesn't introduce that when you're using it with Bluetooth. There's not enough information to introduce any real latency. So you could have this cool situation where you just turn your phone on and click pair and you're DJing directly with this unit. It's probably better to plug a wire in for lots of reasons, but Cool, it's got Bluetooth built in as well, another difference. So if you've just joined us, we're talking here about the brand new Pioneer DJ DDJ Flex 4. It's just been launched. It's the replacement for the DDJ 400. Please ask your questions down in the comments and I will get to you after the show, after we've gone through the seven things you need to know about this unit before buying it. Now the third thing that I wanna to talk to you about here is the microphone socket because the microphone socket on this thing now accepts your microphone with its volume control like normal and feeds it back through the USB cable to the computer. And what that means is that you can live stream with the DDJ Flex 4 without needing an external mixer in order to blend together any microphone you want to use with your music audio. Because what happens normally when you try and live stream from a laptop or whatever uh, with the music coming down the cable as it does into the OBS or whatever you're using is there's no microphone blended in. Even though the microphone's plugged in, it's not blended in because the microphone doesn't go through the mixer of the unit like on more expensive DJ gear. So therefore it doesn't come out the USB at the back. This one has been changed so that it does. The internal wiring means that it does. And that means that if you want to live stream with it, you don't need to worry about trying to get your voice into the live stream as well. Plug your mic in and it's all gonna work. A small thing, but a good thing. So the next thing I want to uh, share with you is some, is the thing that we think is gonna divide DJs. And it shouldn't, but these things always do. And that is that this has got a smart fader function on it. And that, tries to help you DJ when you're a new DJ and you want to mix and you don't really know how it's done. The smart fader function, when you move the crossfader across, automatically matches the BPMs of both tracks. So as you move the crossfader across, it will slow down or speed up depending on the BPM of the track you've got loaded on the other deck. It automatically reduces the volume of the track you're mixing out of, of course, because it's a crossfader, but also takes some of the bass out of it. And it makes sure they're on the beat. And when you get to the very end, it echoes it out nicely. And that means it's just easy to transition in a way that you couldn't do as a beginner right from the off unless you were very good at this stuff. And I thought maybe, um, maybe foolishly, I'd try and give you a little demo of this. So here is record box on the screen. Uh, and I'm going to first, I'm just gonna play a track on this deck here. And I'm gonna move the crossfader across with smart fader turned on so you can hear what it's doing without mixing in. There's a track loaded here at a different BPM. Uh, but this is gonna show you what happens when you do that uh, without actually mixing in this track so that you can hear what, what it's doing. Hear that echo at the end? Now that's probably not a very good example because basically nothing really happened that you can detect there. So what I'm gonna do is load a track on the other deck uh, and I'm going to turn this off and now I'm gonna get the other track on the other deck down to its normal BPM, which is about 90, you can see that in the middle. And this time we're actually gonna mix it in and so you can hear what it's doing. So it doesn't start your track playing for you. So I'm gonna start this track playing and I'm gonna mix in this track here like this. That sounded terrible because we didn't have a smart fader on. Now that's what beginners tend to do, right? Let's turn smart fader on and do it again. 
I need to get that track a little bit further to the beginning because we're, we're at the end of it. Right, here we go. So I'm going to start this track playing from the cue point and mix it in. So it smooths out the transitions, it takes a bit of the bass out and it puts a little bit of echo at the end of the track and just does a few things that you'd probably do yourself with the pitch and with the faders. It's called Smart Fader and it's nice. We've been playing with it with a few tracks. I mean, that, to be honest with you, it wasn't the best example in the world. We've been playing with, with, with it with a few tracks and I think this is gonna be useful, A, if you're a beginner and you just want some help, but also these things work with streaming services nowadays, right? So you can get a controller like this, plug into Tidal, get home from the pub or a festival or with your mates, on a sunny afternoon and say, let's do a bit of DJing. And everyone's saying, oh, play this, play that, play this, play that. Now these tracks are never gonna work in a DJ set together, but you just wanna play music. That button is gonna help you do it and have some fun and maybe come up with some good blends. It's not designed to replace what DJs do. We're a DJ school. We want you to learn to DJ properly. It's designed to give you something else to play with that's fun. And we like it, Smart Fader, no problem with it. And I really like the fact that they haven't stuck these big massive knobs that say, be the EDM superstar, right? at the top of the device like they did on the Flex 6, which I hated. This is subtle. If you don't like it, don't press it. It's just one little button. Uh, so the other thing they've done is add smart color effects. So the color effects normally give you a, uh, you know, give you a, a filter, which is the normal one, right? You have a filter on your channel. Let's get that one uh, back to somewhere like the normal speed. There's a filter, which is what you expect from this knob. But the smart effects give you extra ones. And there's loads of them. I like that, sounds a bit underworldy. Uh, I've demoed all of those in our review. There's a review on the Digital DJ Tips website where we go into detail about this unit. You can go find it now. Head to digitaldjtips.com and click on the review uh, where there's a video there. I go through absolutely every one of those exhaustively, all of them. They're really, really good. You know, most Pioneer, even the pro Pioneer DJ gear, like I've got here, uh, has only got uh, six of those for that knob. This one, has got loads and you just select them by hitting shift and pressing this button here. They're cool because they're macro effects and you could never do that stuff on your own because it's combining stuff that you wouldn't have enough fingers or controls to do. These are really good as well. Again, this is brand new on the unit against the DDJ 400, which uh, doesn't have that at all. So uh, really cool, nice one Pioneer DJ, something extra to play with that you don't even get on the Pro Gear. And so they're the two big differences to help beginners, but also to help DJs who just want something cool that they can play with that hasn't been on gear before. Smart Fader and Smart FX. In themselves, something really good to, uh, to hear. Now, apparently you, you're, you're struggling to hear the music very well coming through, but uh, sorry about that. We will uh, go and watch the review, because the review, uh, the music, you certainly can hear it on, the one, the one I just showed you on the screen. Uh, right, okay, so there's the, uh, it's always a bit risky trying to demo effects and stuff when you're live because there's no one here to check those things. It's just me at nine o'clock in the morning in the studio on my own. By the way, hello, if you're watching us in Europe, in Asia, in, in uh, Australia or New Zealand, you never get to join us on these things. Uh, we're here, uh, it's good to be here with you on this. Ah, I know why it wasn't coming through because it wasn't turned on over there. I've made that mistake before. Should we just have another quick demo of that effect? Because now I know it works. Thank you team for letting me know that. At least I could show people one of them. As I say, we've demoed all of them and I've demoed in a, in a slightly more obvious version, the smart mixing features over on the live, uh, on the review, which is live on the website right now. Head to digitaldjtips.com and find the Pioneer DJ 
DDJ Flex 4 controller review. Okay, so that was our fourth point. It's got beginner help, but it's not right in your face, which is cool because some people won't want that. They haven't kind of ruined the controller to try and make it some kind of bastard Instagram hybrid thing. Uh, number five, which you've already seen, around the back of this unit, they've got USB-C. And this is what Pioneer DJ seems to be doing. They did it with the DJ MS5 mixer that they released recently. Uh, and this is cool, I like it. Nice one, Pioneer DJ. Someone had to replace those horrible old USB-B sockets around the back of DJ gear. Uh, this is the one off to the computer or the tablet. You've even got a tablet picture there. And they, oh, they've got an extra one here for the power. So this I think would be that if you're plug, you've plugged this one into your tablet, or your, or your phone and you want to charge your phone as well, then you'd plug the charging into there and it will keep the unit powered and also keep your phone topped up. I'm guessing what that one's for. That's what that one's for. And also there's that strange Android mono stereo switch, which no doubt we'll be able to show you uh, once this app is launched, once the mobile app is launched in early 2023. So new USB-C around the back, which is something new. So uh, the Sixth thing to point out, which is only a very small thing, but it is a difference, is just that they've remodeled the crossfader area a little bit. So this is the old one. Um, uh, this comes down to about here. This comes down to about here. And your crossfader bits there. This one, they've got stuff coming down a bit further here. So there's a little bit less room. It's a little bit more cramped around here. But look, these are tiny things. You've still got plenty of room for manipulating the crossfader. So there's no real problem with that at all. The seventh thing I wanted to point out then, we're talking about things you need to know before buying the new Pioneer DDJ Flex 4, which is their new entry level two channel controller for Rekordbox, Serato, tablets, iPhones, and Mac and Windows as ever, is that really there's no reason not to buy this one over the DDJ 400. If you have been considering this one, Unless you can find this one at a massive discount somewhere, um, which you might do, in which case grab one, uh, as long as you only ever want to use it on Mac and Windows and you're not worried about smart mixing features or extra effects, this still does everything perfectly. But unless you, uh, you do see a bargain, um, this one is now in every way superseded by this one. This one kind of like has had that freshening up. It's got all those new features. It's basically future-proofed. The DDJ400 has been around for, I think, about five years, but the... Um, but the Flex 4 brand new is gonna be around for the next five years. So do make sure when you're buying that you don't, don't accidentally buy the old one. I mean, it happens, right? They look really similar. Make sure you're getting the new one, especially on those Amazon listings where they're all, all a bit vague about what you're getting. They might call this one the Mark II or something or the old one the Mark I. Make sure you're getting the Flex 4. Right, before we go over to talk to you, because there's lots and lots, literally hundreds of comments coming in, we have a, a live comment feed here. Uh, and as you can see, that I've got loads and loads of comments to chat to you about. So that's awesome. Keep chatting, people. Before we do that, I want to just comp quickly compare it to the other units on the market that you might be looking at now that we've got a new player in town. So the first one to compare it to, I've kind of held it up already, is the, uh, the get it the right way up, the DDJ200. Now the Pioneer DJ DDJ200 is a much smaller device uh, and it's far less well powered. Uh, so it's got no inbuilt audio interface at all. Uh, it's in every way inferior to this one. And we never recommend people buying this unless they're absolute, unless they know what they're doing or they're absolute curious beginners who really don't think they're gonna go any further in their DJing. Because while you will outgrow this quite quickly, this one here has got everything you need our tutor James Hype still uses one of these a lot when he's traveling and just because it's got everything he needs on it. Uh, well, one of these anyway. So don't buy the DDJ200 unless you know you're getting something that's, uh, that's what you need because there's a lot of stuff missing off this. But what this does have is the, uh, the tablet and the phone compatibility because of the sockets and stuff. This one has that as well now because of what we looked at around the back. So you're getting kind of that best bit of the DDJ200 on the Flex 4. So the Flex 4 is the winner for sure against the DDJ200. So another one that we might want to compare it to is the uh, the Newmark Mix Tracks. So um, the obvious ones to compare it to are the Mix Track 
uh, Platinum FX and the Mix Track Pro FX. Both are quite similar, both are quite similarly priced. If you're going to get a Mix Track, go for the Platinum, it's, it's a bit better. Uh, so the difference is between these, uh, the Platinum FX can actually control four decks, the Pro FX can't because it's got the deck layer switches. That's not the deck layer switch, it's there. It's got the deck layer switches. Um, this has got paddle effects. So if you like the idea of paddles, you get those there, but they're very, very limited compared to the effects that you get on this. You've got the effect strip here and you've got the ones that we taught you through there. So you get the, the biggest limitation of these, I think, is the paddle effects. This is a bit more spaced out. If we show you the size of them both against each other, um, the mix track is, it's just got a little bit more space, slightly bigger jog wheels, I think, very slightly. The jog wheels are like a display in the middle on this one, much nicer long throw pitch controls on the mixed track compared to the short ones on the Pioneer unit. Uh, the build quality of this one just feels very, very slightly better as well. The new model, there's nothing wrong with this. We know these last forever because the DDJ400 has lasted forever, but this just feels a bit lighter weight and a bit more plasticky than the new marks. But generally, um, the big thing that you're gonna be deciding here is whether you want Serato or not, because this is Serato only. This one is Serato and Record Box. This possibly works with mobile stuff, not really tried it, they don't advertise that. This is built for mobile as well. So there's the differences between the mix tracks and the, uh, the DDJ uh, Flex 4. They're all about the same price, these, by the way, so that's why I've picked these ones to show you. The next one you might be comparing it to is this one. This is the Rev 1. Again, Serato only. Different kind of use case, this. It's got more emphasis on the jog wheels, which are bigger. It's got this kind of club mixer, sorry, this, this kind of scratch mixer layout in the middle, like a DJ MS7 lay, uh, layout in the middle with your pads here. You might or might not like that. It all feels a bit cramped on this because of the size of it. And of course your pitch controls at the top. This is uh, mainly for battle mixers, for people who want to get into kind of like open format DJing where they're performing tricks and stuff, because it's like a shrunk down version of two turntables and a scratch mixer. Uh, so it's a bit more specialized. And now this has come along. This could be the better choice for Serato if you just want to use Serato uh, as is, um, as, a, as, a, as your choice of DJ software and you're not really interested in scratching and performance and stuff because this one is more akin to that kind of thing. So there's uh, the surprise. We were surprised this came out for Serato, Pre pleasantly surprised because we thought that Pioneer DJ was kind of doing its divide and conquer, having the Rev1 for Serato and this one for Recordbox. But no, pleasingly, Serato is on here as well. Uh, and the S2 from Tractor would be another one to consider in this kind of price bracket. Uh, the big difference here, this is a lovely controller, by the way, the Tractor Control S2. Let's put the sizes against them. As you can see, they're very, very similar. This is a very well-built controller, maybe even, be even slightly better built than this one to feel. Uh, nice jog wheels, quite similar to the ones higher up the, uh, the chain in Tractor, the S3 and the S4. Uh, this has got the big difference being only Tractor software. You can't use this with other software. So really, we always say to DJs, choose your software first before you choose your controller. Uh, because once you've chosen your software, your controller will kind of half choose itself. And it's also very hard to change software once you've chosen one. This would be your choice if you want to use Tractor software because Tractor doesn't work with this. So that would be the decision. If you know you want to use Tractor, then the S2 as the beginner controller is definitely the one to go for. So there's our comparison of some of the other controllers out there that you might want to control uh, compared to the DDJ Flex 4. Uh, and the seven things then that we have shared with you that you need to know before buying this. This is Serato as well. This also works with mobile devices, or at least will do as of early 2023. Its microphone works for live streaming, uh, which, is, which is great. A lot of people are live streaming nowadays. Uh, it has um, built-in beginner features, which are really cool but they're not in your face. If you don't want them, they're, they're, they're just ignore them. Doesn't matter. Uh, it's got USB-C, which is cool. It's the way forward, obviously. Uh, it's got a slight redesign of the mixer that kind of cramps it up a little bit around this kind of crossfader area, but it's all right. Nothing to worry about, really. The whole thing's a little bit cramped. It's just the way these kind of things are. Uh, it, uh, is in all areas probably the better choice over the DDJ400 now, just as well because it's Pioneer DJ's direct replacement for the DDJ400. So now for the rest of this live show, if you're watching the recording of this, ask questions underneath, we'd love to help you. But if you're watching this live, good on you. Um, I'm gonna pull in the laptop 
Uh, and we're going to talk to you about this. Uh, so uh, this is the bit where we interact. So hi, David. Hi, DJ Cash. Hi, uh, Pri, uh, who's joining us. I've not seen you for a while. Our, our, um, our tutor, Pri, who you will see inside our Digital DJ Lab product. So hello, Pri. Um, well, this is a different ty time, says DJ88. That's because Pioneer DJ like to launch at this hour. Uh, and we thought we'd go live at this hour as well. Uh, DJ88 is in the US watching at 3 a.m. Good on you. Uh, so, um, so I was about to uh, go to bed until this no notification came in in the middle of the night. So there we go. So, so many of you saying this is not the normal time. It's cool. It's awesome. Hello, Australia. Hello, New Zealand. Um, so... Um, KC says, we, I was just demoing that feature, so this has got a new feature if you're joining us late called Smart Fader, that as you're fading across, it changes the BPM to match between the two tracks you're playing. It takes the bass out of the track that you're mixing out from and puts a little echo over the end of the track as well, designed to make it easier to mix. How do you avoid the tempo drop when you load a new tr track if it's on auto sync? Well, you can't, you know, it's either or. Uh, if you want it to auto sync, a definition of auto sync is it's going to match the tempos. So if the tracks are very different tempos, then that's going to happen. What's the price of the new unit? It's around 300 pounds, euros, dollars. I'm not sure exactly, but it's all on the review over on Digital DJ Tips. So if you want to uh, read about this, watch a video where I demonstrate all the effects uh, and everything else, head to digitaldjtips.com, click on the Pioneer DJ DDJ Flex 4 controller review, uh, and you'll find in there uh, all the prices and stuff. So here we go, they should be here somewhere now. 319 euros, 299 dollars, and 279 pounds are the up-to-date prices. We'll keep these up to date as it hits the stores and the price fluctuates as always happens with these things. You can also click through to watch our video there as well, as I mentioned. Uh, and also, you can see the, uh, you can see the article that goes with this. Uh, and as soon as we finish being live today, I will be slotting the very video that we're making together now into here as well. So you can read about this there as well. On the ball, we're on the ball, people. Right, back to your comments, back to your questions about the new Pioneer DJ DDJ Flex 4. Hello, William in Chicago. Hello to uh, DJ Noland, uh, who uh, is joining us on Facebook. Uh, and hello to Blake in Toronto. Uh, so, uh, Lee says, oh, it's something for everyone to moan about. If real DJs don't use sync, then this will tip them over the edge. Yeah, we know it will. We're, we're going to play on that because I think the Smart Fader is awesome. And I'm a teacher and I love the art of DJing as much as pretty much anyone else in the world. But I think that that Smart Fader is really cool. You know, our tutor, DJ Jazzy Jeff, put a DJ Jazzy Jeff button on the Pioneer D uh, DDJ SB2 for Serato a few years back, uh, which just gave you some easy scratch patterns to play with. Uh, and he got slated for that. Probably the best DJ in the world getting slated by all the internet warriors saying, oh, it's not real DJing if you do that. Just look, let's tease them. Give them a poke, it's fun. Uh, right, back to, <laughs> back to your comments. No, but give them a, make it a nice poke. Too much bad in the world. Uh, so, um, I love your live streams, says Paul. Uh, they are fantastic. Oh, well, thank you, Paul. Um, right, so questions about this. Have you got giant hands or is it really small? Shall we do a hand against controller check? <laughs> There you go, that's, what's, that's the size of it. No, I haven't got giant hands. My hands are average. I know that because I'm a guitar player and I never found it particularly easy to do those bar chords by getting my hand around them, the, uh, the neck of the guitar. So my hands are average. So there you go, there's your hand check. Uh, I might get one of these, says Jay, just to mess around in the garden with. Um, so uh, yeah, it's that kind of thing, isn't it? Um, Steve says 1997 called. It wants its MIDI controller back. Just another box of buttons with an uninspiring sound card within. So I take it this isn't going to be a device for you, Steve. I mean, look, this is my mixer. First DJ mixer I ever owned. And this is a mixer today. Do you know what? It is what it is. Cars don't look so different from 1960. They're a bit bigger and they're a different color, but they still do the same thing. They've still got four wheels. They've still got an engine up front. They've still got a steering wheel and pedals. Why? Because that's what it is. You know, this is a DJ controller. I think that they've done a good job by not turning this into Homer Simpson's car and bolting on all kinds of rubbish no one's asked for. It just is what it is. So yes, it looks like DJ controllers have always looked. 
just like cars look like cars have always looked and houses look like houses have always looked. We're not looking at the white heat of innovation here, certainly not on the hardware. The real innovation here is all the stuff that's gonna make the life of DJs using this easier uh, from now on. Things like the ability to plug into any device, the ability to use any software. These are real advances over even what came five years ago. And I think we shouldn't be looking at the hardware and saying, oh, nothing much has changed there. In fact, we should be celebrating that because at the end of the day, you want to forget your instrument. Maybe an instrument is a good thing to compare DJ controllers to. I'm kind of going off on one here, but to hear people kind of complaining that something doesn't look you know, bright pink and round for all of a sudden, it just looks like what it is. I find it a bit weird. So. You know, a saxophone hasn't really changed much over the years. It's what you do with it that counts. DJ controllers and DJ equipment hasn't really changed much over the years. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, so Paul uh, Paolo says, it seems Pioneer is renewing their entry level. Will there also be a replacement for the DDJ-1000? And if so, when? No idea. We've not heard anything about the DDJ-1000. All I would say is the DDJ-1000 is a massively popular device, both the Serato version and the Rekordbox version. If they did replace it, I think it's pretty clear what they'd do. They'd make one version that worked with both, and they would put on the USB-Cs and the ability to use with, uh, with different kinds of uh, you know, tablets and phones, as well as Mac and Windows. Um, that's the kind of thing I think they would add there. Uh, hello to Charlie in New Jersey. Says, very surprised by this announcement. Hello to, uh, oh, so D D DJ Noland is in New Zealand, 9.30 p.m. When's it coming out? It's out now. Uh, Pre says the smart fader can be used with the cross fader, the channel fader, or both. You just set it in the settings. Thank you, Pre, and I apologize for the rush demo there, Pre. I'm sure you could have done a better one for us, but we do have a good demo of that in our uh, written review, which is over on Digital DJ Tips now and live. So head to the digitaldjtips.com website and click on DDJ Flex for review, front and center, uh, and you can see the video and read up everything we think about this in exhaustive detail. We do like to do a nice big written review when we do this stuff. Uh, right, so let's grab some more of your live chat about this coming in. Um, uh, a few of you talking about the size of it, saying that's actually an advantage, not a disadvantage when you were traveling around. I agree completely, and that's certainly what, uh, that's certainly what um, James Hype thinks, our, our tutor James Hype. Um, Mr. Mauerdeep, though, says they make these really small. Uh, it looks like a toy. That's not cool. I guess it's good for grab and go. Um, Pioneer makes great equipment for large scale DJing as well. That's the thing. They make equipment for everyone. Um, from the bottom to the top. Whereas brands like In Music, In Music is a brand that owns Iron Audio, Newmark, Den and DJ, Rain. You're kind of going from the very bottom to the very top, but they have a different name for each of those segments. Pioneer DJ, it's just Pioneer DJ, and they make everything from the beginning all the way up to the top. So you're quite right there. It's a different kind of way of going for it. I like this a lot, says Mel. It could be the ultimate mobile DJ controller. I'm always looking to downsize with a controller that has pro features. One thing I've learned about mobile DJ gear is, you know, you don't need to take a full big setup with you, mobile DJ. And one little trick, and I've seen mobile DJs do this really well, is have a lovely setup, have a really nice, you know, really nice table, nice lights, good speakers that look cool, um, and just make sure everything looks A1. And then have your controller in the middle, uh, but instead of having the controller just sat there looking like a $200, $300 controller, stick it in a box, get one of those hard flight cases, and then put the controller in there, mount all the cables inside, and then you put the box on your table, it suddenly looks professional. Something about putting it in a box with the big uh, metal corners and so on just makes DJ gear look professional. Doesn't matter how small or cheap it is. So there's a tip there. By the way, if you are a mobile DJ uh, and you are, um, wanting to kind of up your game. We launched a DJ course this week, or late last week, uh, and it's called Mixing for Mobile and Wedding DJs. So if you go to Digital DJ Tips and click DJ Courses at the top, you can find it in there by scrolling down to our mixing courses, mixing for mobile and wedding DJs, but also on the Digital DJ Tips homepage, there's a big banner for it. The reason I'm telling you about this is that this course is currently $100 off because it's the launch week, but we're closing this in like a day or two because uh, as I say, uh, it's been on sale for a few days now. It's our biggest mixing course ever. It's done really, really well and lots of people are enjoying what's in there because it teaches you to mix with the radio versions of the biggest music in the world. You know, we're not talking underground dance, we're talking the 
big tunes, the ones that everyone plays at weddings. So this is a way of standing out because if you can mix those tunes in a way that's better than everyone else, you're gonna get noticed. Uh, as I say, radio versions, all the tricks that the very best mobile and wedding DJs are using now. So go take a look at that, go to Digital DJ Tips, click on the big banner for mixing for mobile and wedding DJs or go to our courses page where you can click through and you can see all our other courses as well. 27 DJ courses, 32,000 students. We love this stuff. Right, back to you. What are you talking about regarding the brand new Pioneer DJ, DDJ Flex 4? We've got a review article. We've got a seven things you need to know article accompanying this. Uh, and we've also, got, uh, we've also got the news piece over on Digital DJ Tips at the moment. So uh, lots of stuff to read about here on that. But meanwhile, let's see what you're saying. Um, shout out to this, says 777 Lando on YouTube. Uh, this has been the look since the VCI 800 from Vestax. They nailed it. Um, what are the kills like on the EQs? I'm pretty sure you can decide what you want the kills to do inside the software. Um, so um, so yeah, yeah, that becomes your choice. Um, so can you size it up with the DDJ 400 again, side to side, not on top? Not easily because of the way our cameras are zoomed, but I can have a go at doing that for you. Um, this is the 400 at the bottom, and that is the... Flex 4 at the top. They are honestly exactly the same. Apart from the rounded corners, they are exactly the same size. They're the same depth, they're the same height, they're the same width. There's no difference. And there's no difference in the components they've used either as far as quality goes. It is exactly the same device as far as how this all feels. Exactly the same knobs, exactly the same type of buttons, exactly the same pads. There's no change to any of that stuff. The quality has not dropped, the quality has not gone up. They are exactly the same. Um, why the yellow buttons? It looks so 2010. Oh, I don't give a toss about buttons, what color they are, as long as they do the job and they light up when I press them, but that's just me. Uh, so um, let's grab another live comment. How's the sound quality? Exactly the same as the sound quality on the old one. It's good, it's okay, it's fine. It's not the same quality you're gonna get with Pioneer DJs. D DJM 900, which is not the same quality you're gonna get with Pioneer DJs. Uh, V mixes, you know, it moves up the chain and this is the bottom, but it's fine. Uh, don't expect to play with this in a festival and have the same sound quality as the very best, you know, four figure mixes, but it's fine. Um, so Pioneer DJ definitely have things in develop development, but we're not sure what yet. It's my team helping you guys out who are all asking, what's coming next, what's coming next, what's coming next? Um, Graham says, I currently have a DDJ 400, which I've had for a few years, and I have a DDJ 200. Should I upgrade to this? Depends if you want what this has got. Um, it's, not a, it's not an expensive upgrade, especially if you sell those two and use that money to buy one of these. So yeah, maybe you should consider doing that. Uh, Sono Distorto on Twitch, hello Twitch family, says, do you think that with the possibility of playing with your phone, playing tunes directly through streaming platforms is a real possibility nowadays? Or is it better to download them first on your phone or device? I don't know because I don't know whether the Pioneer DJ mobile app, the Rekordbox mobile app, which is coming for this unit, is going to allow you to plug into your Tidal, Beatport, Beatsource, SoundCloud, etc. I don't know whether it's only going to be for your local music or for those services. If it's only for local music, then no. But if it does let you interface with those services, that's going to be really cool because that means that basically you could use this unit with your phone and your phone is providing all the music with wireless, you know, wireless acquisition of that music over 4G or whatever. And the only thing that's connecting the two is the wire, if you choose to use the wire. Um, and then the phone could even be powering this unit or you put a battery pack in the back. So then you could have something that's quite similar to the way things like this work. This is the Denon DJ Prime Go, totally different type of device. This is a professional shrunk unit, standalone. But the screen in here, it's got Wi-Fi and a computer, and therefore you can stream music directly from the internet onto this. It's got a battery as well. But if you had this unit here with your phone plugged into it, and the new Pioneer DJ app lets you use streaming services, then that would be kind of like your phone would be the only extra thing you need to do something very similar to what we were just looking at. Uh, maybe the phone could power this, maybe you'd need to have a power pack plugged into the back as well. But I don't know whether that new Pioneer DJ Record Box mobile app will let you use streaming services. We just don't know that yet. It wasn't clear um, to us on the little bit of information we got whether that's going to be the case. We'll do some digging for you though. Uh, hello for, to Neil in New Zealand. Uh, we will be back uh, on Thursday, by the way, 
with our usual Thursday Q&A live. So if you're new to Digital DJ Tips, maybe because it's a new time and you've never seen this before, uh, we're the leading online DJ school, the people behind Rock the Dance Floor, the, uh, the number one Amazon bestseller on how to DJ. We also do a lot of live DJ training uh, on our Facebook, YouTube and Twitch pages. So we usually do that at 3 p.m. London, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Eastern at the moment because of the clock. So have the clocks changed in the in the um, United States? Not sure. Always confuses me. Anyway, 3 a.m. Uh, London GMT. We do this show every Tuesday and Thursday. This Thursday, I'm back doing that and it's any questions. So come and uh, join us then if you've got questions about your DJing. We'd love to help. Hello to Mixmaster G up early there in Amsterdam. Uh, is this just the 400 reskinned, says Pretty Migzu. Well, I've covered the differences between this and the 400. Uh, so uh, yes and no. It, it is just the 400 hardware wise, apart from a few um, notable changes, but the software has been improved a lot and the compatibility with hardware has been improved a lot as well. So have you done a review of the Denon SC4? Yes, we have. Go have a look over on the website, Gavin. You'll find that one there. Um, is this above or below the 400 in the range? Good question. It's replacing the 400 in the range, Vanilla Splash. So it's going to be the replacement for that, uh, but definitely above the 200. Uh, so um, your time has got me confused, says Charlie. Yes, we're live because Pioneer DJ has just gone live with this unit. Uh, and um, I think we're going to stop there, people, because, hey, don't know about you, but I've got a day to get on with. It's... Uh, it's uh, 9.42 in Central Europe, where we are based, and uh, I've got a meeting at 10 o'clock. The day continues. I just wanted to come live and show you the new Pioneer DJ, DDJ Flex 4, uh, in person, because we've got one here, and this is the first live show you will see where we've got the ability to answer your questions. So I hope we've done that. I hope we've answered a few of the questions you had about this unit, the DDJ 400 replacement, the new Pioneer DJ Flex 4. Uh, one more time then, if you want to find out more about this, the best place to do that is over on the Digital DJ Tips website. Head to Digital DJ Tips, click on Pioneer DJ DDJ Flex 4, click on seven things you need to know before buying it to find a written version of what I've just presented to you. We've even got information about the new Record Box app, at least everything we know. And if you like what you see, click on the new banner at the top, join Digital DJ Tips, it's free and you get our weekly Tuesday Tips newsletter, which has got mixes, free lessons, Jazzy Jeff, James Hype, Laidback Luke, ourselves, DJ Angelo, all helping you to improve your DJing. It's free to join, and that newsletter is free as well. Every Tuesday you'll get that as our latest member. So head to digitaldjtips.com, become part of it. We love doing these things with you. I'll be back on, what day is it today? Is it Tuesday today? I'll be back later today, actually, for our next Tuesday Tips live show at 3 p.m. London, 10 or 11 a.m. Eastern. Don't know if your clocks have changed yet. Uh, and then back again on Thursday for any, uh, any questions. So till then, get good, get out there, make the moments. I'll see you again in another live show very soon. Bye-bye.